Okay, with rational functions, let's talk about finding horizontal asymptotes without actually graphing them. And I know on these examples, I already have the graph given to you, so you can kind of see what it looks like. But basically, we kind of have these three different situations that can occur. And each one of these is going to be based on the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denom denominator. Then y equals zero, the x-axis is going to have our horizontal asymptote. If the numerator is degree is bigger than the denominator by exactly one, we get something weird that's called a slant asymptote. And I'll walk you through the steps to locate these. And then the third case is they could be the exact same degree, um, numerator and denominator, in which case we use the ratio of leading coefficients. So that sounds a little bit strange, but it's actually not that difficult. So let's take a look at one example from each one of these cases. So the first one is comparing our numerator and denominator here. Let's just pick out the degrees. All right, so we'd say degree one for our numerator while we have degree two for our denominator. Referring back to our rules, you wanna note that the denominator is bigger. That means that um, when the denominator is bigger, we're gonna have y equals zero as our horizontal asymptote. And one way to kind of think, visualize this is use some of the cases you've already seen. Like I like to go back and think to myself a very basic case where we have y equals one over x, degree one for our denominator, degree zero for our numerator. Well, we've seen the graph of this already. It's that kind of strange looking one that's split up between the first and third quadrants. But our graph at the extremes got close to the x-axis in the same manner that this function is gonna get close to the x-axis as well um, because the degree of the new denominator is bigger than the numerator. So on the graph, you can see that we get close to the x-axis at the extremes, even though a bunch more is going on in the middle, that out at the end, this end behavior sometimes we say is getting close to zero for a y value. Same thing is gonna be true out here to the left-hand side. All right, next example. What's going on here is our degree of the numerator is bigger by one. So we can say the degree of the numerator is two compared to the degree of the denominator, which is only one. This time we get that slant asymptote case, which sounds a little bit strange, but here's how we work it. Basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna do this division, right? We have a rational function, but this is a polynomial divided by another polynomial. You can either use long division to divide this out and get your quotient plus the remainder over the, div the divisor. Or this is our situation where we're dividing by something kind of special. We can use synthetic division on this one. So let's set up synthetic division. We'll put a one out in front because we're dividing by x minus one. And then our coefficients for the three, negative two and one are gonna go up above. And then our three comes down. And remember we multiply one times three makes three, and then add vertically, negative two plus three makes one. Then we multiply, one times one makes one, add vertically, and we're gonna get a two. This two, if you'll recall, is our remainder, whereas our quotient is given by, these are our coefficients for the quotient. So this division works out to be our quotient, three x plus one, plus our remainder two over our divisor, we are dividing by x minus one. So the equation of our slant asymptote is actually, if you leave off this fraction at the end, it's gonna become very, very, very small because we're looking at the extremes, right? The end behavior, what happens at the extremes where you're plugging in a very, very large value for x here. As x approaches infinity, what's gonna happen is your denominator becomes very large, Therefore, this fraction as a whole becomes very, very small. So what we do for our slant asymptote is you simply use y equals whatever the quotient was, and you can leave off the remainder over the divisor as far as your slant asymptote goes. And these look kind of strange on graphs, but this is gonna have this sort of look. Notice this is just the, the graph of the slant asymptote is just a line in this situation, as it always will be. This line has a slope of three and a y-intercept of one. So notice they started at one, they go up one, two, three. 
um, and up one, two, three, and they go over one. Up one, two, three, and they go over one. Um, so you could graph this pretty easily using what we know about graphing lines. All right, the third and final case here that we're gonna be looking at is a function where the degrees are the exact same. So you may say to yourself, comparing those degrees, we have degree two over degree two. So when they're the exact same degree, we say y is equal to the ratio of leading coefficients. So basically you have to pick out what are the leading coefficients for these, um, the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator, we can say, well, it's pretty obvious that's gonna be a three out in front of the highest power of x. For the denominator though, you may wanna double check that's a one out in front of the x squared. So when we set these up as a ratio, we do three over one, or y equals three is where we're gonna get our horizontal asymptote. As you can see from the graph over here, a lot of other stuff going on, but we're gonna get this horizontal asymptote going across at three. Out at the very right-hand side, we get closer to it. Over at the very left-hand side, we also get closer to it. Um, so hopefully this helps out in seeing our three different cases for comparing degrees of the numerator and denominator and exactly where we're going to get a horizontal asymptote or a slant asymptote if we do have one. All right, good luck.